Hey guys, welcome to another WoW video. And for today's video, we are going to go over the best way you can get the Scepter of Azhakir, which is done through archaeology and it gets you this amount. So when you learn the item, it becomes the Ultramarine Karaji Battle Tank. So this one is actually a pretty unique mount. The reason I say that is because as anyone that's done AQ, you know a lot of the mounts that are like this are only summonable in AQ. Aside from that, there was one other that you could ride anywhere. It was the Scarab Lord one. So in order to get that, you had to pretty much be at the AQ gates, ring the gong within the time limit, and get it. A lot of people don't have it because of either not playing back then, or not knowing that that was the technique, or not having 40 people because you kind of needed like a full-on raid group to do the quests <laughs> leading to all that. So yeah, it's quite the achievement, and like honestly most people just have it in classic because classic was like the second chance at being able to do scarab lord there's a high high amount of people in retail you know the original wow that do not have it which means that this was kind of your your second option this archaeology a similar mount so yeah if you want a battle tank that you can use anywhere this is what you want to be farming. Tolvir is what you're after. And there is a quicker method. I was doing two farms here. I was farming the Mount and the Vial of Sands. And so let's just have like a quick little combo of a Vial of Sands. Back when I first started um, farming the Vial of Sands, this method didn't exist because this expansion didn't exist. You know, Vial of Sands came out in Cata and the only way you really could get the um, Tolvir was by spawning the Uldum. That method really sucks. It's uh, very slow. So it is nice to have this method out in Panda. So this method that you can use for both Vala of the Sands and your Scepter is... So you'll start by getting Exalted with Lorewalker doesn't take long. I would say between an hour to two, depending on your speed of things. So once you hit, we'll say revered, you're going to buy this item here and it allows faster rep. And once you get exalted, come back to this vendor and you're going to buy the disc of the red flying cloud. This was actually my favorite mount in the Mist of Pandaria expansion. It was very unique. It was the first mount you could really stand on that legit was a flying saucer, more or less. Uh, the mage mounts that kind of resemble this came in like in Legion. So yeah, it was this one for a while, I'd say. And then, of course, there's also a tab you can purchase if you like collecting those and then at this point you're gonna go over to the other side where uh, we just came from and talk to Bran but before we do I don't think I opened up my map so I'll show you where this is we are standing in Veil of Eternal Blossoms and Mogashan Palace is where you're going. You're gonna fly all the way up to the top and you will see the entrance in. There'll be archeology span vendors. Uh, it's also where you can change the time from like, you know, old veil to BFA veil. So yeah, uh, just fly up to the top and that's where we're situated. As far as coordinates, although you should be able to just open up your map and see this, but if you need coordinates, it's 8331. And then go back to Brand Bronzebeard, and he's going to have a few items aside from the crates. So what you want to do is you want to get the Manted Artifacts Hunter Kit. When you open that up, it is going to get you 
two items. One is super crucial for fast farming here. So one item is going to be your lore walker map and you will also get the mented artifact sonic locator now this is the major item you want to have on you it lasts one day and what it does is it takes all your mista pandaria dig sites and it confines it to 10 long steps and dread waste so you have smaller dig sites that you can pretty much take care of within I would say 30 seconds to a minute. Also they're quicker travels so you're not traveling all over the place. If you've ever done some digging in Panda you know that one of the worst dig sites in Panda is Jade Forest so to get that one out of the picture and never have to go over there to dig is a blessing because those can be big maps. So that is what the Sonic is for to give you faster collection. And then the Lore Walker map, basically it randomizes your dig sites. Um, there is a no reason to need to randomize your dig sites because of the other item making it so that they're so close. But there is one reason you would want to use it and luckily because of this reason, this is just a free map you get from buying the pack. And that is that when you first use your locator, you have two options. One, you can log out and that will reset your dig sites and they'll be set to town long and dried waste. Or you use your map uh, because when you first use the locator, you're still going to have the same dig sites as you had before. The only difference is if you go out to them, you can't actually dig at them. Yeah, it, it's, I don't know if it's a bug or what, but yeah, you have to, you have to force spawn the two at the start. So the map is the best way to do that without logging out. Just use the map and yeah, I, I personally believe that's the reason they give you the map in that pack. And the next item, which I feel is just as important as that Sonic Locator, and that is the Lore Walker's Lodestone. So this, this will teleport you to a random dig site. It has a 30 minute cooldown. What I like to do to not only um, save on the usage of it, but make it more convenient and more worth my time is I only use it when I go back to buy crates. So I'll, I'll use it when I'm at the vendor and I'm ready to go back to digging. And a lot of the time I go over 30 minutes. I won't like come back right as soon as the 30 minute cooldown's done. I usually use my bag space as an indicator. Once I'm down to like the last three spots in my bags, then I stop unless I'm really close to finishing, you know, a solve for a certain one. But for the most part, I'll go for as long as I can handle more or less. And then I'll come back because it does cost crates to buy these, right? So you want to make a good use uh, because on your first day, you're going to be spending three crates right off the bat. It's gonna cost you two for your artifact hunter's kit and then another one for your lodestone. And yeah, I never use the lodestone at the dig sites. I only use it to get back to the dig sites because it, um, it is a bit of a travel from the Vale to, you know, dried wastes and town long. Uh, as I'm out here digging, you can see that you, you can proc a mob as well, which gets you bonus fragments, which will also help you out. Now, with all that said, let's get to the actual mount part of this. So, I really didn't think I was going to luck out this early. I got this solve on the 38th, I believe. We'll, we'll see. We'll see in the chat box here. And I didn't expect to actually get it this soon. I, I really did luck out with these. Vial I got on the Saturday and then the following Monday I got the mount. Now Vial I had been farming a bit before. It, it was rough because like I said back then you had to spawn all them sites. So 
it's like while I want to say I did a pretty heavy duty farm with it, it wasn't really heavy in fragments, you know, the the big part of that farm was trying to spawn all them, right? So I definitely feel like this right here was my major farm. And, um, and yeah, I think I lucked out with both Vial and uh, the Mount. The difference is Vial is a much worse farm than the Mount because you're, you have the RNG on uh, the jars. And then on top of that, you got hope that it's the recipe in the jar. So just because you get the salt for the jar doesn't mean you get the recipe. You know, you could open up many of those jars. So two RNGs there. Whereas this mount, you just got to hope it appears as a solve. The minute you see it, on your archaeology table, you know you got it. Like, it's it's a craft, boom, you have the mount. So that's why I like the mount one better, you know, because there's more confirmation and, yeah, you don't have to rely on that second part of RNG. So here is me making the mount. As you can see, it takes 150 fragments. I had them because I was expecting to do this huge grind of Tolvir afterwards. And so I just bought all the boxes. I had just come back from like a good 30 minutes minimum of digging. And so I bought all the boxes, and so yeah, I I had more than enough to make the um, the mount. So that was really nice. And uh, that is basically the video. So there's not much to this. You just gotta get your archaeology, and you want to do your digging in Panda. It's the fastest way. My plan is to actually stay out here and just do everything. Like this is such a fast method that it's just the method I'm going to take for everything else because I still have a bunch of Panda achievements. And yeah, I'm right in Panda. I could go do them in Jade Forest, but it's long. It's a long, you know, grind out there. And uh, honestly, with this method, I didn't even feel like I was, I didn't get burnt out, you know? Like, granted, a big part of that is I did get the mount, but I didn't stop digging after the mount. I kept going because I have achievements and I have other solves that I'm going after on my archaeology table. And, uh, and yeah. So I would suggest this method for many other things that you may be going after that are also on the table. And uh, that's the video. So I hope you enjoyed. Good luck on your farm. Um, keep in mind, I was lucky. So if you don't get it in 40 solves, uh, that's typical. I did read that the average solves is like 200. Uh, some people are even way over that. So, um, so yeah, yeah. Consider yourself lucky if you get it in the same amount of solves roughly as I did. We'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.